Chapter 20 is about electrical energy, or electricity. But before we really get into the idea of electricity, we want to break down some of the general properties. So we're going to be talking about electric charge, electric force, and how objects become charged. Now what we're going to be doing today is taking some notes. So you want to be following along and taking notes on your paper as I'm taking notes on my paper. So any red text or any drawings that I do, you want to be following along and doing them as well. Let's first get into what electric charge is. Electric charge is basically a fundamental property of matter. Kind of like you can talk about the mass of matter. You could say it has a high mass, you could say matter has a low mass. Well, when we talk about charge, we say that an object can have a positive charge, we can say an object has a negative charge, or we can say an object has a neutral charge. Now this all comes down to the atom and how the atom is made up. The atom is made up of particles, what's in the nucleus, One of these particles is known as neutron. And we like to say that neutrons have no charge. The nucleus is also made up of particles that have a positive charge. These particles we call protons. As we said, they have a positive charge. Now, going around the nucleus, in these areas that we call energy levels or within the electron cloud, we have the electrons. And we know that the electrons have a negative charge. So why is all this important? Well, take a look at your protons. Your protons are bound to the nucleus. That means they're unable to move. The positive charges that are within the matter are not able to move. But your electrons can move. Now, this is really important because what that really means is that it's your electrons that create electric charge. So electric charge is caused by the movement of electrons. One final thing we should learn about the idea of, ele of electric charge. When an object is charged, the unit for charge is something called the coulomb. And it actually takes 6.24 times 10 to 24th electrons to create just simply one coulomb. So when charge is being created, we're not talking about 100 electrons moving. We're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of electrons moving from one object to another. Let's take a look at electric force. Electric force is what causes opposite charges to attract and like charges to repel. You've heard of this before. Opposite attract, likes repel. The actual strength of this force, the actual strength of this force depends on two things. The first thing it depends on is the amount of charge that the objects have. Let's take a look at an example. In our first set of objects, they have less force because they have less charge. So in this case, less charge is equal to less force. We're going to show the force simply by using the arrows. Let's take a look at our second set of objects. In our second set of objects, they have a large charge. And because they have a large charge, there's a large strength of force between them that's pulling them together. So we can say that if there's more charge involved, That means there's more force.
less charge, less force, more charge, more force. Pretty simple example. Charge is also dependent on the distance between the charges. So in this example, we're going to see that all the objects have the same size charge. The only thing that's different between them is the distance. So let's look at our top set. In our top set, they're pretty close together. In our bottom set, they're pretty far apart. So here's what we learned. If you have less distance, there's more force. If there is more distance, there's less force. Let's take a little side note here. Your force is directly related to charge. That means if one goes up, the other goes up. So here's a good example. Let's say I, it would increase the charge of some objects by three times. That means you would have three times more force. The distance is inversely proportional to the square of the distance of charge. Here's what that means. One goes up, the other goes down. And this square kind of throws a monkey wrench into how much. Take a look. Let's say I increase the distance by two times. What that means is that I'm going to have four times less force. Because remember, this is the square. So it would actually be 2 squared, making it 4 times less force. There are three different methods that an object can use to become charged. The first method is called friction. In friction, the electrons transfer from one object to another object when they rub against one another. So you have to have some type of movement involved in order for friction to work. This takes place because one object will have a greater attraction for electrons than another object. In the end, you're going to have one object take a positive charge and the other object take a negative charge. Let's take a good look at an example of this. If you take a balloon and you bring it near a wall, or you bring it near your sweater, or even if you touch a sweater, nothing will happen. But if you bring it near the sweater and touch the sweater and rub it against the sweater, or rub it against your hair, you notice that the balloon will stick to the wall and become attracted to the wall. This is called charging device by friction. If I bring it near my sweater and I rub it on the sweater, you'll notice that the electrons have a higher affinity for the balloon, and they get transferred to the balloon. Same thing happens when you rub the balloon on your hair. Our balloon now has a high negative charge to it. As you bring the balloon near the wall, electric force attracts the balloon to the wall, and it will actually stick to the wall. Again, this is called charging by friction. In order to charge by friction, you must have two objects rubbed together, and the electrons transfer from one object to another, charging both objects. If we're going to draw this, here's what we can do. Let's draw a balloon before transfer takes place, before friction takes place. In this example, you remember, we have the same amount of positives and negatives. 
the balloon started as neutrally charged. Then the balloon went through some type of rubbing. It rubbed the sweater. You could rub a balloon in your hair. All right, we'll just say rubbing. And when that happens, the balloon will steal electrons from either your hair or the sweater, and the balloon takes a negative charge. So now when we draw our balloon, kind of in the after situation, we still have the same number of positives. Remember, the positives can't move. They're not going anywhere. But now we have all of these extra negative electrons around, meaning we have more negatives than positives. The balloon takes an overall negative charge. Quick note, you'll remember that the balloon is made of billions of atoms, and only a few thousand electrons are actually transferred to create this charge. A second way that we can charge an object is through contact. In contact, electrons are transferred from one object to another when the objects are simply touching. There is no rubbing involved in this. Here, you're going to have the electrons move spontaneously from a high concentration to a low concentration. So let's say we have two objects. Our first object, we're going to make extremely negatively charged. Lots of negative charges. Object two, we're going to say is neutral. neutral charge. We're really going to bring the two objects next to each other. We're going to actually have them touch. Now in this situation, we're going to see that the electrons are going to go from where there is a lot of electrons, a high concentration of electrons, to where there is a low concentration of electrons. The first object, the one on the left, is still negatively charged. The second object, now that it has gained all these extra electrons, it has more electrons than it has protons, and therefore it is also negatively charged. So again, this is called contact. There is no motion involved. There is no rubbing involved. You simply have electrons spontaneously moving from high concentration to a low concentration. The final form of charging that we can have is called induction. Induction sometimes is just called a separation of charge. This is where you have a separation of charge take place because the electrons are attracted or repelled by a charged object that does not touch. So now we're going to have zero touching take place. In friction, objects touched and rubbed. In contact, they simply touched each other. In induction, there's not going to be any touching involved. Let's take a look at some of the examples first. So our first example here, we have a negatively charged rod, and we have a neutrally charged sphere. The rod is going to come close to the sphere, and the electrons are going to move to the opposite side, causing a positive side and a negative side to be created. Let's take a look at this example. Here we have two spheres that are touching each other. Both of them start as neutrally charged. We're going to bring in our negative rod again. And just like the last example, the electrons are going to be repelled to one sphere, and then the other sphere stays positive. So we have a positive sphere, a negative sphere. We separate them, and one sphere stays negative, the other sphere stays positive. All right, so here's our final example. Just like in the first example, the negative rod is going to cause a separation of charge to take place within the sphere. The right side becomes negative, the left side becomes positive. 
In this example, though, we're going to add something called a ground wire. In a ground, the electrons are going to travel down the wire away from the object into the ground. The ground wire is then removed, and the object keeps a positive charge. Let's try to draw a pretty simple example of this. We'll kind of do a before and an after. So when we start, let's say we have a sphere, and the sphere is negatively charged. And let's say we have a cube, and our cube is neutrally charged. Now let's bring the two objects close together. They're not going to touch, they're simply going to become close together. Now when this takes place, when they become close together, you're going to note that the positive charges don't move. Remember, positives are protons, they're bound to the nucleus, they can't move. The electrons can move though. And what we're going to see is that the electrons become repelled. The electrons that are on the left side of the cube are all going to get repelled to the right side. So what happens now is that you're going to have a buildup of electrons on the right side of the cube. Will there still be some on the left side? Sure, not very many. Our right side of the cube takes a negative charge. The left side of the cube takes a positive charge. So now a separation of charge took, took place. We created a negative side on the right, a positive side on the left. Again, separation of charge is called induction.